Good evening YouTubers, my name is Andy Devo and today we're going to be talking about a beginner's guide to tabletop. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I am currently ranked inside the top 10 in the tabletop community and also predominantly play most of my uh, Blood Bowl on Twitch TV uh, with my co-caster Zunk. Now before we start I need to clear off a couple of things. Uh, I made a video a couple of weeks ago and I had a lot of feedback from you guys out there so thank you very much. Uh, the first thing they said was get rid of the script so uh, we'll be doing get rid of that. And the second thing they said was, be more natural. So I brought with me a cup of tea. Now, moving on. Number one, um, let's take your time to build your roster. Because if you're going to go to a tabletop tournament, um, you'll be playing there all weekend. You're probably playing five or six games. You need to take some time over your roster. And the reason we've got Blood Bowl 2 loaded up is because I've actually loaded the first four, or the four most powerful rosters, generally speaking, at tabletop. And I'm going to talk you through those. Um, and hopefully by the end of that, you'll actually have an idea how to build your own rosters, not just for these four races, but for all the other races. Uh, we're going to start with my personal favourite, which is Dark Elves. And I'm going to straight, go straight to the team page. Now, for those of you who don't recognise the Blood Bowl 2 interface, I have named some of the positionals uh, and what skill they take there. So, for example, it's a Blitzer, um, and I recommend you go with Dodge. And I also said that what you should do is when you get your skill pack, actually you need to take your skill pack apart and put on the skills that you know you're definitely going to take so for example i'm going to the euro bowl next month and i'm really looking forward to that and i'm probably going to be taking dark elves and this is the typical build that i would take with dark elves so three blitzers they have to get dodge because no other skill comes close in terms of ability um, to make these players uh, as powerful as they are so these three are getting dodge so i know that three of my six skills have already gone and i've got three left I'm going to go with two re-rolls and an apothecary over here. Um, 11 players. Now, the two witch elves. If you've got three skills left, you need to skill each witch elf. You haven't got the ability to skill more than one player, put more than one skill on a player. So, uh, it's a question of block or wrestle. Personal preference, I've tried double wrestle. I've tried block and wrestle. Um, I haven't tried double block, but I don't think that's such a good idea because I think you need wrestle for taking down um, blodgers. So, one block and one wrestle. Or double wrestle. I think they're both great. And then you come down to the, uh, the runner. And I think it's either dodge or leader. The idea behind leader is that it takes you up to your three re-rolls. So you've got a little more versatility. The idea behind dodge is that it makes the ball carrier a little bit more versatile and manoeuvrable. And it also means that he can perform being a screen piece. I think they're great, both great skills. I've tried both. My personal preference is leaning now towards dodge. And my personal preference for the witch elves is... Probably one block, one wrestle. So um, that's Dark Elves. Next up, we've got um, probably a slightly more diverse roster in the Wood Elves. Um, Wood Elves having one of the absolute highest win rates at tabletop, um, bar none. And they are one of the most powerful races. Uh, on this one, again, if you start with your stack six standard skills and you go and put the skills on that you know you've got to take, that means you then have a little bit... Um, you've got less decision making to actually uh, come up with. So two skills, got to go on the ward answers. One gets tackle, one gets strip ball. These aren't up for debate. They just need to have those skills. The only other question, if you, if you are going to be a little bit funky, uh, I've seen a couple of players take Frenzy. It's a great skill. You've just got to drop one of those two skills. I don't know which one I'd drop. So if you're new to this, I recommend you take tackle and you take strip ball. Next up, you need to take leader on the thrower. So that would be my three skill picks that you've got to take, um, leaving you three skills left. Now, you've noticed here, I've actually only spent 1050 and typically you get 1200, uh, 1100 to spend. So you can either buy an apothecary, takes you up to 1100, or you can have another reroll, which then means you wouldn't need leader, which then means you would be able to skill the tree and these three guys. Or you could replace the tree, put a lineman in, which would give you another 50k, and meaning you could buy an apothecary and not have a tree. My personal favourite at the moment is take the tree, play with uh, two re-rolls, don't bother with an apothecary. Um, and then I wouldn't bother with a leader on the thrower and I'd skill all the catches. That probably gives you the most value out of all the players. It's personal preference, not saying it's right, it's just my personal preference. Um, for catches, I like one side stepper for making movement, uh, for making one turn is a bit easier and covering the sideline. I like a sure hands for going and recovering the ball when the two war dancers have gone and fetched it. I like a kicker for being able to kick deep against the slow teams. 
Um, and then grab or guard. Guard for just being gener generically helpful and throwing blocks. And grab for helping on your 110. It's entirely up to you. Both great skills. Um, you pick. Next up, we've got Liz and Man Team. I've talked uh, to Purple Goo, who's one of the best players in England. And this is gen generally his uh, roster. So thank you very much, uh, Goo. Um, and I played against this in Eurobowl last year. So um, we've got 12 players on the team. We've got a Croxy Goal with either Stand Firm or Guard. That's your choice. You can go with other skills, but I do recommend one of those two. Um, three or four block Sauruses. If you don't take block on maybe the fourth one, you could maybe put a tackle in there. Three block and one tackle works. Uh, and then Goo likes two break tackle Sauruses, so I'd recommend you take two. Um, you can change trade out a break tackle for maybe a tackle, uh, but I recommend probably four block, two break tackle would be my choice. Um, skink's down to 11, and then you've got a bonus skink, but no apothecary, because you've got three team rerolls. And then last up, we've got the undead team. Now again, the undead team, I think it's really easy to skill the undead team, because take your six normal skills. Put the skills on that you know you have to take first. That leaves you maybe only a couple of skills left, and they're the ones you can play around with. So for me, guard on both mummies. It's an absolute requirement unless you're allowed to put a doubles for block. Guard on the mummies goes on there. So you've now only got maybe four skills. You need one tackle white. You probably then either taking mighty blow or guard. So that's three of your six skills gone. Now you've got a choice. It's type, your skill in the white. It's either mighty blow or guard. I have seen Frenzy a couple of times. It's not a bad skill. It's a bit different, bit left field. But I think you'll get more value out of one of those two skills. And then you've got normally two skills left to skill four ghouls. Um, pick. Pick two of four. They're all great. It's just pick. Um, if it was me and I'd only had two skills left, I'd probably go one block and one sure hands. Um, this gives you three team rerolls, uh, 12 players, and three fun factor. It's a very reliable roster. It's got a little bit of punch. It's got quite a lot of speed. Um, it's why Undead are one of the top four races in Tournament Blah Bowl. So, now you've picked your roster. Moving on. You've sat down at your table. Um, the first, next thing I'd recommend you do is set some ground rules when you meet your opponent. So, yeah, nice to say, nice to meet you. Hello. Um, before we've picked up any dice, I normally say two things. One, any of the dice that aren't flat on the table, I'll re-roll it. Because then you haven't got an awkward situation where turn five, you've rolled a pow, it's slightly up against a model's base, and you go, oh, I'm having that. Or you've rolled a skull and you think, oh, I need, I haven't got a re-roll left, and you don't feel guilty about picking it up. If it isn't flat, re-roll it. And if you say at the start of the game, before any dice are rolled, normally your opponent then doesn't even blink twice, and it just takes that embarrassment away. Um, the second thing um, is taking back moves. And... What are the ground rules on that? For me, when I sit down on play and I'll say, I don't mind you taking back anything, so long as you're not rolled a dice. If you rolled a dice, you're now bound by that. Um, and again, that just, it takes away the unease uh, before a game starts. So I recommend you do that. Number three, be aware of how long you've got to play the game and during the game, how long you've got left. There's nothing worse than a new player being put on the clock. If you're already new, you've just sat down, maybe this is your first tournament. The last thing you want to do is then have someone standing over you saying you need to play faster, you need to play faster. So just get yourself a clock and if you've got two hours to play, you know you've got an hour to play the first half. And just a little bit of polite conversation with your opponent saying, yeah, we're on turn three, we've, we've had 45 minutes, I think we probably need to play a bit faster. Do you want to do two minute turns? I'll do two minute turns. And if you negotiate with them, Normally, nine times out of ten, everything's fine. So just be aware of that. Um, number four, and this was one that I started doing a couple of years ago, and it's really helped me, and that is that I get the back of my roster and I write down on every game, after every game, or start of every game, sorry, uh, what skills my opponents picked. Um, so skill rings, it might put red for mighty blow and green for guard and blue for block, and I just write them down so I know, and we can just look at the board, and I know exactly what players, what skills, what players have got. And so I don't go into that embarrassing situation where, oh, has he got guard? And then you've rolled the dice and you're in trouble. It's a rookie mistake. Um, I got caught out by it once. And this just seems to have fixed it. So, uh, next one, play like a pro. Now, play like a pro for me was something I learned only last year, um, which is... 
and people are going to laugh at this who know me quite well, um, is use dice to mark down on the board where you want to put your players. You've got a ghoul, it's going to move seven squares diagonally, but you want to make sure you've got a cage around it. Well, pick a dice up, mark it seven squares away, put it down, get another one, move it, and then you've not moved any figures, you've not rolled any dice, you've worked out where you can move your cage to as a complete unit, and then you can just pick it up and move it. And then you don't have this positional error where you've got to make go for it that you don't need to make, or dodges you don't need to make, um, and you can just be a lot stronger. Um, a lot of the pros do that, so you play like a pro. Use dice. Um, and then the last one. Uh, this is um, fairly obvious, and yet I see so many people do it when I go to a tabletop tournament. And that is, go and speak to the people around you. All the people there playing Blood Bowl, there's, there's maybe only 20. There might be 50. You might have gone to Euro Bowl, which is happening next month, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, but go speak to the people around you. They're really interested in Blood Bowl. And you'll have a much better time if you interact with all the people around you. So go do it. If you're worried about what to say, go up to them and say, oh, that's a lovely team you've got painted there. Most people are proud of their teams. Most people paint. I don't, but uh, most people do. Um, or, hey, how are you getting on? Or, I've not seen you here before. Just an in, anything. And you'll you'll have so much of a better time if you can go and talk to some of the people there. And you know, never know, maybe on that weekend you might be playing them. And you'll have a, such a better time. So, um, that for me is a beginner guide to blow, uh, tabletop. I just want to close on one last thing, which is next month it's the Euro Bowl, and I'll be representing uh, Wales, uh, which I'm really, really excited about. I'm not sure whether I'm taking this roster, so this is a reveal possibly. Um, this is my current necromantic roster, um, which is block on two werewolves, block on two flesh golems, uh, a tackle white, a guard white, a bludge ghoul, and a guard zombie. Idea being here, I've got seven players with block. I've got three re-rolls, I've got a tackle player, and I've got a couple of players with guard. I'm hopeful this will work out. I'm going to try it out in a couple of games, and we'll see how we get on. Uh, again, I took my own advice, which is put the skills on players you know you need to put on first. So I put on block on the two flesh golems. I put skills on the two whites. Um, and I decided that I wasn't going to go mighty blow on a wolf. And so I thought, you know what, I'll use guard on a zombie. Um, but it's so much easier if you can just take those skills... Put the ones you know you need to put on first and then go and add the extra ones on after. And it'll work. Honestly, it works for any team. Um, one last final sh um, thing. I just want to make a shout out to those of you who are attending Euro Bowl. Uh, Peter D, thanks ever so much. You've been a, a massive help to me over the last few years. Um, and so I hope to see you there. I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, and also Wolfen, who is also attending the Euro Open. Uh, he's helped us out. Um, with a lot of the website stuff that he's done for us. So thank you very much. I've been Andy Devo, you've been the viewer, and this has been great. Thank you. <laughs>